let's go over some employer responsibilities with respect to contractors. 1910-119-H2-I, the employer, when selecting a contractor, shall obtain and evaluate information regarding the contract employer's safety performance and programs. Now, this is a true story. Uh, at a facility that I used to work, I was on the process safety management team, and we were looking at contractor safety, and we went through this requirement, and one of the team members said, all that says is when we're selecting contractors, we need to evaluate contractor safety performance, but we don't actually have to do anything with it. So it was his contention, it was his interpretation of this paragraph that all we had to do was actually just to review contractor safety performance, put it in a file, and do nothing further. No, no, that's, that's not the intent. The intent is in the selection process that we just don't go for low bid, that we look at the contractor safety performance, and that may qualify a good contractor company. It may actually make them eligible for, for part of the award of the job, or if they have a, a poor safety program, they may actually you know, be disqualified. So we actually have to do something with that evaluation. And I like to say that that was uh, legal interpretation to the extreme. So we've got to actually do something with that, that review. Now under 1910-119, paragraph H2II, the employer shall inform contract employers of the known potential fire, explosion, or toxic release hazards related to the contractor's work and the process. So there needs to be some reciprocity here. We want to make sure that we select qualified, competent contractors. We also need to notify, inform contractors of potential hazards on that work site and what the contractor can do to protect himself or herself. Now under 1910-119, paragraph H2 triple I, the employer shall explain to contract employers the applicable provisions of the emergency action plan required by paragraph N of this section. In other words, if there's an emergency on that process, do you evacuate and seek refuge on site? Do you go into the control room? Or do you get away from the process? What, what's the proper uh, evacuation during an emergency? 1910-119-H2 Roman numeral IV. The employer shall develop and implement safe work practices consistent with paragraph F4 of this section to control the entrance, presence, and exit of contract employers and contract employees in covered process areas. Now I want to mention to you everything that we're talking about now is for a PSM covered process. But I want to mention that OSHA has something called the OSHA multi-employer doctrine. If you have even a facility that does not have a PSM covered process, we need to make sure that contractors working on our site are complying with existing OSHA you know, regulations. So if we see something unsafe, we have a, a process of correcting that action with the contractor. In other words, if OSHA goes to a facility and does an inspection, if they see a contractor uh, commit an OSHA violation, potentially, the contractor as well as the host employer, that host company, could be cited by OSHA under what OSHA calls the multi-employer doctrine. So not only do we have requirements and responsibilities for contractors under PSM, but also in general we need to make sure that we're selecting contractors who are working safely. And if we see something unsafe performed by a contractor, we've got, you know, some type of method to, to actually have that corrected. Now let's go over some additional employer responsibilities. Under 1910-119-H2 Roman numeral V, the employer shall periodically evaluate the performance of contract employers in fulfilling their obligations as specified in paragraph H3 of this section. So I recommend that your purchasing department be heavily involved in the selection of contractors and doing the initial selection process. You have a questionnaire 
And also there'd be a periodic valuation of contractor safety performance. On large jobs, quite a few of my clients will do an evaluation periodically through the job as it's going on. And then at the end, and whether or not they recommend this contractor for future work or if they're disqualified for doing, from doing work with that company again. Now, 1910-119 H2 Roman numeral VI, the employer shall maintain a contract employee injury and illness log related to the contractor's work in process covered areas. And that, so that would be applicable to PSM covered operations. Thank <music> you.